everybody, it's Megan. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to do a flip through of my Hobonichi Cousin and I also thought I'd show you the setup for it since I haven't done that yet. It's a little bit off-centered now because I'm trying to minimize the really harsh glare of my lights so I'll center it once I open the book. I wanted to go ahead and start by saying this is the Hobonichi Cousin which is the A5 size and this is also the Avec version, which means it's only six months. So this is going to be the July through December half. I do have my other set here, or my other, my first six months here. Um, but I didn't do a whole lot with this one, to be completely honest. I'm really kind of starting over with this one. So let's start with the cover. I'm using a Midori MD clear cover in the A5 size. It's basically just a clear cover. It fits really well. I found that it did not, it wasn't too tight. There's actually a little bit of space here. So that way when the book kind of fattens up, um, the more I put into it, the, co the clear cover will, will still work. I think you can also put the clear cover on a 12 month Hobonichi Cousin. It might be a little bit of a tighter fit, but I do know that the plastic does um, have a little bit of give or stretch to it. I've put the Midori A6 cover on a Hobonichi planner, the black covered one, the, the English version. And it was a little bit of a, a stiff fit to begin with, but um, the, the clear cover lasted the entire year and that was a 12 month. So I would assume the same for a cousin. All right, I just put a bunch of pictures, um, my own photographs, some other kind of uh, ephemera that I had, some die cuts and then on the inside I just use the inside of the of the sleeve to kind of hold some extra stickers in the front and the back. These here are from Simply Gilded. These were from a random like 100 stickers for $20 on Amazon that my husband actually got and then I stole those from him. This is from Wonton in a Million. I think that this was from the Michaels collection. This is a really, really old foiled sticker from Creating & Co. Some additional Creating & Co. reading stickers. This says started reading, finished reading, and then from Sweet Ava's paper, just some colorful uh, quarter boxes. In the back, I'm holding more Creating & Co. These are, are more recent. These are some of her anti-kits, which basically look like this. And I'll talk more about these afterwards. And then Alexi Kylie Designs um, monthly script, which I also have on the inside here. This is from Capital Chic Designs um, at Michaels. They're die cuts. Again, Wonton and a Million at Michaels. And I believe this is Jill Christina um, company or paper company. I'll leave links to all of this stuff, especially um, that which is still available. I'll leave that all in the description box. So for the yearly overview, I do nothing. I don't really use this as a planner. So for me, keeping track or kind of putting things here doesn't really help me in any way. This Hobonichi Cousin really is more of documenting and holding on to my thoughts, my feelings, things that have already happened. So. I'm not using it as a planner at all. All right, so this is the like month at a glance and I'm using this as an index page, basically. Hence my little sticky tab. You'll notice that I don't fill in every single line here. These do correspond to my dailies. So for the month of July, on July 3rd, I wrote down my thoughts about Hamilton, which is here. Oh no, here. Okay. And then on the fifth, I wrote my thoughts about the Donut Villa Diner, which is a place uh, that we've really been enjoying the last uh, couple months and so on and so forth. Okay. But I'm not putting every single memory. I'm not writing down every single memory. What I'm writing down are basically my reviews of restaurants, movies, books, um, anything that I think I might want to reference again. So especially with the restaurants, I want to be able to reference and say, what did I eat? So that way maybe we could try different things. Or if I could decide if it's a place I even want to go back to. Movies, 
do I want to watch it again? Um, or TV shows, books, right? If I do decide to do more, plan uh, not planner videos, but if I do decide to do more reading videos, I want to have reference to these books. And also it'll help me remember my thoughts about these books. So that way, if there's a sequel, I can look here and I don't have to try and remember or go on Goodreads and read spoilers to refresh my memory. So this is my index. The next set here, I've covered up and put, um, used some old stickers that I had and just put July, August all the way to December again. This was originally 2021, January through June. But since I'm not using it as a planner, I decided to use it as a habit tracker for each of the current months. So yes, I do have to do some renumbering, which you'll notice here, especially with the place that would have been February. And I did end up renumbering the days of the week because for Hobonichi, they do uh, use the red color to indicate Sunday and that was throwing me off. So I did have to put Sunday through Saturday. You know, I had to list the, the first letter of each day of the week so I could keep track and not get confused by the colors of the, the numbers. Another thing I do have to keep in mind and kind of remember is that my months are off. July is fine, but starting with August, all of my numbers are gonna be a little bit off, so I have to change those every month, but I'm okay with that. To me, that's not a big deal. So I just put a dot to note that I've completed the action, and I like this because I get to see what my overall pattern is for the entire month. So I've been really good about prenatals, which is important, um, and I've been fairly good about morning water. And I was doing really well with meditation right around the middle of the month, but towards the end of the month and definitely at the beginning of the month, I kind of didn't do it. And I haven't done meditation at all so far. So it's really good for me to kind of see overall patterns, which is why I like having this habit tra tracker set up. All right, moving on to monthlies. So I'm not using the month of June because this planner technically started in July. So I just use this um, spot as kind of a holder. I pulled this Target clear pocket that I had and I just put these extra book covers that I printed out. Basically what I've been doing is when I finish a book and I write down my thoughts in my Hobonichi, I like to have a picture of the cover um, with the review so I know immediately what the book is and this is a bunch of books that I printed out a long time ago that I had originally intended to read but then obviously never got to so I decided I'm going to keep them here and hopefully this will remind me that these are books that I want to eventually read and write down and review so hopefully I'll be motivated to to keep up with this here's what my monthlies actually look like so the stickers that I'm using for the monthlies are all from Capital Chic Designs from, from Michaels. There's like a square monthly sticker book and it gives you each of the months, the days of the week that you can put at the top, the date dots. And then they also have like individual boxes and little deco. So I thought that, that this was really nice to put into the Hobonichi. I thought it would be perfect. And I did do that for each month. So July, August, September, and so on. For the new months, I also added January as well. Hobonichi, the cousin for Hobonichi goes to January 2021 and it tells you, which is really nice. So here's how I like to use my monthlies. I like to put the books that I'm currently reading, the books that I'm carrying over from the previous month, on the left side of the column. And then at the very bottom, I like to add to my TBR list, what additional books would I like to read this month that maybe I haven't started yet. And then I use the, the stickers that I keep here to mark when I actually start reading. And I also mark when I finish them. Another thing that I'm doing is actually just writing down when I read or listened to something on an audiobook. So that way I can see really quickly what my reading habits are. For the quarter boxes, 
The quarter boxes are just if there are any major events happening that day that might have affected my reading. The 10,000 headshots was something I was helping my husband with and it was like an eight hour event and I was actively helping him so there's no way I would have been able to do any reading or even listening to audiobooks. So to me that did actually affect if I could read but I was able to do some reading early in the morning so I wrote that down anyway. I also wrote that I picked, picked up some books from the library and returned books as well. So again, just general reading habits. So here's what my weekly looks like. Since I'm not using this as a planner, I wanted to do something different from your like weekly planning layout that a lot of people use this for. I had actually tried doing that in the first half of the year in the first EVEC, and you can see I was a little bit successful, but I just gave up because I have a Hobonichi Weeks where I do all of my daily planning and I have a coiled vertical seven by nine planner where I put all my stickers and do my memory keeping. So to do that here would be really repetitive, especially since I already have a lot of like journaling with my dailies. So I thought I'd do something different here. What I thought I'd put here was the Hobonichi challenge. This is a challenge you can find on Instagram. I'll leave links to the, um, the IG accounts that host this and the ones that created it. But basically each month there's a theme. The theme for July was space. And there's a bunch of words or phrases that are related to that theme. And you can either practice lettering or doodling or both. I know a lot of people do the doodling in the actual journaling or daily part, but I thought that this would be a nice alternative and I'm more likely to letter than to doodle. So I thought that this would be nice and I could see all my lettering all together. So what I do is I basically just copy down from Instagram um, what the keywords or phrases are for the, uh, for the current week and then each day I can reference them. Or if I need to catch up, which I do for the month of July, I'm a little bit behind, um, I'll have reference and I can do a whole bunch of them at once. Here's what July looks like. I think June was all about candy. So July was all about space. As you can see, I didn't do anything for 17, which is space shuttle. I wanted to use that same font that um, NASA uses that I put for astronaut, but that's gonna take me a little bit more time. So I wanted to really make sure I dedicated some time to, to make it look nice. Kind of ran out of time for this week. So I did some of the e easier like hand lettering and then the end of July, which again, kind of ran out of time. So I'll try to go back and fill this in. However, I'm also not super um, worried if I don't get through this, right? Because I think I will still do some of them. And even if I don't do every single day, I think it's still kind of cool to look through and see the ones that I do, see the different colors and the different ways I might approach uh, doodling or hand lettering out the different themes and the different uh, words and phrases. So that's what I'm using, how I'm using my weeks, uh, the weeks section of the cousin. Now let's go on to the dailies. So before we get to the dailies, you have that one page where it says turning, was it turning a new page or something? Turning the page. And so what I've put here is basically my 13 goals that I had set at the beginning of the year. And I had actually put this in my first um, half of the year in the same spot. Let me see if I can find it. There we are. And it was a lot shorter. I just had these intentions or goals. And so basically what this is, is like a halfway, how am I doing? And so for me, I did a lot more writing and reflecting on these goals to see where I was at. Was I, am I actually progressing? Do I need to adjust or shift some of my um, goals? I am using these little sticky tabs. These are from Muji and I think that these are like perfect little sticky tabs. Um, they're just the right size where they're not too big. They also fit, if you are a planner, they fit in the cousin, the months of the cousin perfectly without like taking over the entire page. So I really like that. And then one thing I've noticed is that the stickiness does not leave a residue on this paper. I know some sticky notes, you put it on there, you take it off, and there's a little bit of tackiness 
or just residue, not with these. And I've left these on for months with um, previous Hobonichis, never had a problem. So these are by far my favorite. All right, so now we're at dailies. So what I like to do on this page is use it as an overview of highlights for what's already happened for that month. In case you're not sure what that page looks like, it's basically just an empty open space. And I know some people use it for planning and goal setting. I just like to keep track very quickly at a glance. What are the big things that have happened? So here's where I use the Creating & Co. Anti-Kit stickers, which I think are designed for bullet journaling, but I like it for this. I like it because you do have a couple of the full boxes that you might see in a vertical planning style that uses stickers. And some of them are the actual square boxes, but some of them are more of these like free form, which I really, really like. And then you have this faux fake washi where it looks like it's been torn, some extra fake washi, and then some deco. The days of the week I haven't used, I might try to incorporate them in the dailies or might I might not. I haven't decided. And then I'm using the Lexi Kylie Designs monthly script to really just make that month pop out. And then I have my dailies. So my dailies honestly are mostly journaling. I'm a big writer. I've been trying to incorporate more images and pictures and a lot more like differences in fonts and lettering. I've been really inspired by Mitts from My Life Mitts. She does this very like amazing job of putting together this very eclectic, junk journal style journal and yet it still looks really cohesive and interesting that's not my style but it is something i aspire to so one of the things i've been doing is trying to include more photos like more actual pictures i don't actually have a printer at my home so what i do is i save everything on my phone put it put all the images into pic collage one of the apps one of the collage apps on the phone and then I send them to like CVS or Walgreens and have them printed out on actual photo paper. So they're a little bit thick and I do have to glue them in or, or tape them in with a tape runner, but I do like how it adds color and interest. There's a lot of food stuff, a lot of pictures of me and my husband and our dog. And um, it really kind of helps with the, the scrapbooking and the journaling aspect. I'm also trying to add more washi, use up a little bit of the washi that I've collected and some of the older stickers, decorative and functional that I've used. And again, like I said, changes in fonts, larger fonts, more hand lettering, um, different color markers and uh, pens, that sort of thing. So here's a flip through. I've also been doing tip-ins. So if I received something in the mail that I thought was really pretty, I've been adding them in, tipping in photos as well. One of the drawbacks I've noticed of using photos, like actual photos printed out at Walgreens or CVS, is that unless I'm getting this updated every day, which I don't really want to do, like I don't really want to have photos printed out every day and go to Walgreens every day, then I'm having to wait until there's several photos that are put together into a collage. And that means that there's a delay in me writing or I have to do something like this where I tip it in. I'm also adding in any ephemera, so any journaling cards or dashboards that I receive from, or die cuts that I receive from different sticker shops and planner shops that I wanna hold on to, I'm putting them into here. And then I am using the little sticky tabs from Muji to mark spaces that I either wanna go back and complete or things that I wanna go back and reference. So this is something I will eventually reference, but also need to complete. Some stuff from Simply Gilded. These are from Coco Daisy. These were a free printable that I printed out and then taped in. Here's an example of um, printing out the cover of a book so that way I could write my review on it and I can see immediately what the book is that I read. So it immediately visually jogs my memory. some examples of me attempting to do more hand lettering. I'm also trying to add in quotes. Again, just different images I've cut out from magazines and collected over the last couple of years. My goal is to try and incorporate, incorporate a lot of my ephemera and like 
little cute images that I've cut out and collected into the Hobonichi cousin this year to really try and minimize the stack of papers that I'm collecting. And that's, that's it. That's the month of July. I did kind of get this started for August, but I won't actually fill it out until the end of August. So that is a flip through of my Hobonichi cousin. If you have any questions, please check out the description box. If there's any item you're interested in that I did not talk about, feel free to comment about it and I'll help you out and let you know where I got it if I can, if it's still available. If you like this video, I'd love if you gave it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a great rest of the week. I will talk to you down in the comments and see you again in my next video. Have a great week, everybody. Bye.